Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Cobbs. I am going to discuss a case for our series on neurosurgical issues uh, that is quite interesting and represents a phenomena that we see not infrequently um, called a Chiari 1 malformation. So um, we're going to meet a young lady who uh, is the typical patient that I see for this. Um, usually um, somebody in their 30s or 40s or maybe younger who says that they have headaches that are really severe in the back of their head. Um, classically, for a Chiari malformation, uh, the headaches are associated with coughing or straining. Um, and uh, what is a Chiari malformation and why do people have these headaches and other symptoms? Well, a Chiari malformation is uh, something that is thought to be acquired over time, or maybe you're born with it, but um, essentially, if you look at the brain and you look at the bottom of the brain, uh, the cerebellum is the structure that is shown here in green. And as you can see, it stops about right there. And then the opening of the skull is right there. So normally there's plenty of space around the um, opening of the skull for spinal fluid to circulate. And this is called the medulla. That's the bottom of this, the uh, brainstem. Imagine, however, if the, these uh, two green guys, cerebellar uh, structures, were protruding down where my fingers are, and uh, instead of this opening of the bottom of the skull having plenty of room, you have a situation where the brainstem is coming out and the cerebellum is coming out and everything is jammed into that hole as if my fingers were shoved in there. So why would that cause headaches and other issues? Well. Um, what happens if someone coughs or strains is that um, that causes a backup of venous blood. So a lot of blood goes up into the head and that increases the volume of the uh, structures in your brain. Your brain expands and dilates. And if you look at the brain from a side view, normally um, there's, so spinal, there's spinal fluid that circulates in and around the brain. It comes down through here and it goes through the middle of the space between the cerebellum and brainstem, and then it circulates down here. So the second that you cough or strain and pressure goes up in venous blood volume in your head, immediately spinal fluid normally shunts down around the spinal cord and everything equilibrates and there's no severe um, gradient of pressure. But if you're blocking the base of the skull, if this uh, opening is jammed, then spinal fluid can't come out of the head. So for a little while after you strain or cough, um, there's no escape from that increased pressure from the venous blood engorgement of your head, and people get excruciating headaches. Another thing that can happen, which is kind of unusual with a Chiari, but it does we do see this, is because of the long-term compression of this part of the brain, it seems that it may be forcing pressurized spinal fluid into the spinal cord itself. And this can cause people to develop what's called syringomyelia, which is further down in their spinal cord in the neck region or in the middle of their back. There's a teeny tiny little tube in the spinal cord and it starts to dilate. And you basically get a dilation of spinal fluid within the spinal cord itself. And that over time can progressively cause serious problems like loss of uh, sensation and musculature in the upper extremities. So um, if that is present in a Chiari malformation patient, that's definitely a sign that something needs to be done to fix the problem. So how do we fix uh, the problem? Well, um, if you look at this model of the back of the head and the spinal, uh, spinal cord or the spine, um, you can increase the, the space around the bottom of the cerebellum by removing bone. And so the surgery for Chiari malformation is basically a surgery that removes about a three by three um, square shaped, since three by three centimeter square shaped area of bone at the back of the skull right here. And this little guy here, which is called the arch of the C1 vertebra. So if you remove bone from here down to here, then the uh, st structure called the dura, which overlies the spinal cord, it's like a leathery membrane, usually will, will pop out and allow spinal fluid to flow around the back of the cerebellum where it was being jammed in. So if you look at this 
anatomy again, if you open up, open up the size of the opening, essentially, you can allow uh, spinal fluid usually to then circulate up and down so that when someone coughs or strains, that spinal fluid can immediately go up and down around the spinal cord. Now, it doesn't always work and occasionally people don't get better. One thing we do like to test before uh, doing a surgery is a called a uh, CINE MRI, which means an MRI where you can see, uh, track the motion of spinal fluid. And most of the patients with Chiari that need surgery will have no evidence of flow of spinal fluid in the back of their brain here. And so um, that's just one more diagnostic uh, factor that we like to use to determine who might be a candidate. So what are the other symptoms of a Chiari? Well, like I said, if you're, uh, if this part of your brain stem is being compressed right here, you can have symptoms associated with uh, injury to that area, including swallowing difficulties, balance problems, um, spinal cord issues. For the most part, most people just present with headaches, especially if they cough or strain, but they can have balance trouble, they can have swallowing difficulties, they can have stuff related to spinal cord uh, syringomyelia, which is when the dilation occurs in the spinal cord. So we're going to meet a very nice young lady who has the classic headaches of Chiari. She has the MRI findings associated with Chiari. Um, and, um, and we operate on her and try to help her. Um, it should be noted, though, that a lot of people have the quote-unquote diagnostic criteria of Chiari, which is um, evidence that the spinal that the cerebellum goes down beyond five millimeters below the back of the skull base. Um, so just because someone has that on their MRI does not mean that they need surgery because a lot of times they have no symptoms um, and just the MRI finding of a Chiari, uh, if it's just not that significant, if it's six millimeters and they have no symptoms, they don't need to have surgery. But if they have severe headaches and the other findings in their life is you know, not tolerable because of the severity of the headaches, then I think it makes sense to try to do surgery and help them out. So we're gonna meet a patient that we uh, fixed and she got a lot better. Thank you so much for allowing me to interview you and to talk about your situation. Why don't you tell me kind of uh, what's the main problem bothering you? Um, it started out with fainting. Fainting, right? Um, well, it first started when I was driving, so I knew I had to do something about it. And then it slowly turned into having seizures that would happen every other day. And um, I there was nothing I could do about it. You've had headaches for a long time, right? Yeah, there, yeah. Where, really where do the headaches occur? Um, mainly it starts from like my right side. And then sometimes it will just stem all the way from down my neck. And when you have headaches, does it uh, get worse if you cough or sneeze? Yes. What happens if you cough or if you strain real hard? Um, it hurts my like, neck really bad or just gets more like throbbing, just very intense. Do you ever black out? Um, sometimes I won't, like I can't even fathom the pain that I just curl up in a ball and just want to scream, but. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna have you look at my finger, okay? <laughs> look way over here and over here. Well, the other day when I did that, your eyes were bobbing a little bit. That's called nystagmus, and that's something we see with Chiari malformation. Now, what is Chiari malformation? Chiari malformation is when the cerebellum, which is the base of the brain, goes down too far and it kind of compresses the out, outward flow of spinal fluid that comes out of your brain. If we look at your MRI right here, this is your brain MRI. This is called a sagittal view. So spinal fluid is made up here and it has to circulate down through the brain. It has to go down through here. Here's your cerebellum. And normally the spinal fluid flows all the way down and then comes out here and circulates all the way down through the spinal, around the spinal cord, all the way down to your low back. If that opening of the bottom of the skull is blocked by all this tissue from your cerebellum going down too far, then that can cause this pressure to get too high. If you cough or sneeze, the pressure goes up in your head normally, but usually spinal fluid immediately gets squirted or shunted down to make that equilibrate so there's not too much pressure in your head. 
However, if your brain is blocking like a cork, the bottom of the skull, then the pressure will go up here and it'll take a while for that pressure to equilibrate. And during that time, you can have horrific headaches, especially if you cough or sneeze or strain like when you're using the bathroom. And one thing that can happen is your spinal cord can actually start having problems in the neck region where you get dilated spinal cord and all kinds of issues. So what we do is we take, to fix this, we're gonna remove some bone at the back of the skull and we're gonna remove the top vertebra. So um, if you could hold this model for me for a second. This is a model and let's say your brain is normally, your cerebellum comes down to right here, it shouldn't go down through that opening. This is where your brain stem is. Okay. So that opening is supposed to have your spinal cord, the, the medulla of the bottom of the top of the spinal cord, but then space, see around where my fingers go right here. But if there's no space because the cerebellum is jammed in where my thumb is like that, then if we wanna make more space, what we can do is a surgery that's really where we remove a little bit of bone right here. And then we'll remove that little guy right there. That's the arch of the C1 vertebra. If we remove that bone there and that bone there, then the little membrane around the brain and spinal cord called the dura can, can then expand. And that will allow spinal fluid to flow freely. And that should alleviate and prevent those headaches from happening. So the surgery takes about an hour to do that. Um, you know, we will make an incision in the back of your neck, right in the middle, and we'll do the surgery. And uh, most people are up, sitting up, talking, and ready to go home the next day. Every surgery has risks, and you should know there's a small risk of an infection or bleeding, something like that. Mm -hmm. But if we can help it, we're not gonna open the dura, so it's not really gonna go in and expose your brain or the spinal fluid. But theoretically, that could happen if there was an issue. But I just want you to know that uh, it should be safe and hopefully when we're done, you'll be, you'll be cured. Now, rarely when we do that procedure, even though that membrane expands, it doesn't expand enough. And I have had a few patients over the years where I've had to go back and take a little, yeah, take a little graft of tissue and and sew in a patch so you can dilate that space up even more. We're gonna to try to avoid that. I don't typically do that up front and I don't typically open it up. And if you look on the internet, sometimes people coagulate the cerebellum, the tonsils of the cerebellum. I don't do any of that because nine times out of 10, I find just by removing that bone that people get better. So hopefully that's the case for you. Yeah, hopefully. You have any questions? So. Um. Thank you answered. Well, thank well, you so I... much for letting me interview you. I'm sure it's going to go well. <laughs> thank you. Okay, we're all draped for the surgery. She's in the pin head holder. We have, we have prepped this area. We'll make the incision here. We're going to remove the back of the bone on the bottom of the skull and the first vertebra arch. We've got everything set up. We've got the microscope draped for the surgery. We've got our wonderful nursing staff back here with all the stuff on the back table that we'll need for the surgery. So we're ready to get going. Well, you sure look good for somebody who just had <laughs> surgery two hours ago. I do, I feel very good, honestly. So we removed the bone on the back of your head and that vertebra, the arch of the vertebra. And um, I think it's gonna give you more space and hopefully that headache, all those headaches and everything will get better. I think, yeah, I think it will. You've had them for a long time, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> Do you have any problems? I'm sure you're in some pain since you just had surgery, but. I, I feel good, honestly. I feel fine. It's very, it's bearable. Wonderful. Well, well, hopefully over the next, you know, week or so, those, you'll notice that those headaches have gone away and mm -hmm. we'll just keep in touch and uh, your incision looks nice and clean and so thank you so much for letting me interview Perfect. you right after thank surgery. You. Thank you. look you very so much. fresh and Smiling for someone who just had brain surgery. Yeah, yeah, it feels good. All feels right. Good. All right, take care. Thank you. Okay, so it's the morning after your surgery for your Chiari. Mm -hmm. How long have you had these headaches? Um, probably what, all my life. Your whole life. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, but and I haven't had any at all. Even since yesterday. the surgery, they mm -hmm. went away? Mm-hmm. Are you pretty happy you did it? Yeah, I'm really happy. 
Okay. It's going to be all good in the end. It's just I bet neck your neck's a little now. stiff, but that'll yeah. get a lot better. Yeah, but it already feels a lot better today, too. We're going to let you go home. How about that? I love that. Thank you. You need to just keep the uh, sutures dry for three days. Okay. If you shower, just wear a shower cap. And then after okay. that, you can shampoo and shower and just leave it open to air, okay? Okay. Can I take a peek at the back of your neck? Yeah. Okay. Okay, there's a drop of blood on the bandage, but other than that, we'll take that off and let you get out of here. Perfect. Thank you. Well, um, I'm so glad you're feeling better, and we'll see you back in the office in a couple of weeks to take out the sutures. How about okay. that? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Take care. You too. Well, here we are on Zoom. It's been, um, what, December? It's been about six weeks since we did the surgery for your Chiari, and you told me before the surgery you had this kind of severe chronic headache in the low back of your head and an upper part of the neck yeah. and since the surgery how has that been going been really good no really bad constant headaches none down below at all okay and the incision healed up okay pretty good didn't it yes can you know you said before the surgery i think if you coughed or sneezed maybe it would make it really bad mm -hmm. have you noticed any difference in that yeah, I had like a little cold earlier and when I would cough and everything, I wouldn't feel any pain or anything. So basically the symptoms that you had prior to the Chiari decompression have gone away. Yeah. You, most, most. you told me you got a little headache up above your eyes now, but I think that you just had a cold, so maybe that's due to sinuses and not, yeah. the, not the Chiari. Um, overall, how was the experience of having the surgery? I think we did it and you went home the next day. I know that's a lot to undergo but was it worse than you thought better than you thought about what you thought it was way better than i thought it was going to be i think after like the first two weeks i was perfectly fine Wonderful. like i couldn't feel any pain or anything so if you had um any advice to give somebody who has a chiari that if they're considering surgery you would think maybe it's a reasonable thing to do yeah okay for sure. all right well thank you so much again for allowing me to video you and um I think people with this problem would really appreciate hearing your um, point of view. So thanks again. Thank you.